Charlie from DM Sound, and today we've got the sound system demo on the 2024 BMW X5 and its 16-speaker Harman Kardon audio system. This is going to be an in-depth review. We're going to take a look at how the infotainment system works, take a look at audio inputs, adjustments, and controls. We're going to look at speaker locations, and then we're going to head out on the road and listen to these sample tracks while we're rolling, and I'll give you my thoughts at the end. Now, if you don't want to hear any of that stuff at the beginning and you just want to hear the music, click ahead in the video. We've got chapters to get you right to the tunes. And if you want to see the Bowers and Wilkins upgraded audio system here in the X5M, check the link below as well. I recorded a sound test on that yesterday. Before we get started, let's hop out and take a look at it. Redesigned for 2024, the BMW X5. Still handsome, arguably a more traditional appearance than the X7 got for its life cycle impulse. I think this looks quite good. It drives really, really well. No big surprises. You can still get it as a plug-in hybrid, a six-cylinder, a V8, the crazy M uh, competition models. There's all sorts of fun X5 to be had, so check the link below to see all of our coverage. Now we always do these tests with lossless, uncompressed wave files on a USB stick plugged directly into the system, and high-quality Roland binaural microphones in both of my ears, giving you the most realistic audio system demo on YouTube. We also do the test with the sound settings set to their factory default, so let's take a look at those now. The very nice iDrive 8 system might have a bit of a learning curve, but once you get comfortable with it, it's one of my favorite infotainment systems. We're in the media screen now. I'm going to go over here to the right using this rotary knob. You could also reach up and touch the screen if you preferred. Click down on that and I get the sound screen. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here and hit reset settings. Unfortunately, when you do that, oops, it toggles Logic 7 Surround. Now, Logic 7 Surround is not one of my preferred surround sound uh, mixers, if you will. I don't like the, the algorithm they use to create the sound. So we'll listen to it a little bit, we'll adjust the surround intensity, and then I'll probably have that off for most of the testing. If you like the way Logic 7 surround sounds, that's totally fine. It, it's just an artificial way of making the music feel like it's coming from around you and it's not gonna be very true to your recording. So if I'm evaluating music from car to car to car, I wanna have as little technological intervention as possible. We'll come back to experience the sound, but below those surround settings, you have treble and bass. Let's go through those. Below those, you have adjustments for front, rear, left, right, fader, and balance. And then, if you wanted even more custom ability, you can go into the 9-band equalizer. I really appreciate that. Even though this isn't the top-tier Bowers & Wilkins system, BMW still gives you the 9-band equalizer to tweak things to your liking. Let's check out this experience, the sound, real quick. I think this is a cool setup that BMW is doing in their cars now. It's a cool sizzle reel and it, it just gives an opportunity to flex on the system, whether it's when you're in the dealership or when you're uh, showing off to your friends or something like that. It's a cool way to really uh, bring out the most of the system there. And that's all you've got for audio adjustments. For audio controls here in the X5, you have a nice volume knob here, although I've noticed in this one and the X5M yesterday, there's a lag to the volume knob. So you can really spin it, crank it, and nothing happens. So that's a bit strange. I don't know if it's a hardware issue or a software issue. And then you've also got volume adjustments on the right side of the wheel. For track selection, you've got physical controls down here by the volume knob. You can use the touch screen, you can use the rotary knob, or you can use these controls right below the volume on the steering wheel. For audio inputs in the X5, you have your standard AM, FM, 
FM's got HD radio support, Sirius XM satellite radio, a USB-A port up there for data, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto support, and that is it. So what does that mean you're missing? No wired Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, not the end of the world, but something to be noted of. No 3.5mm auxiliary input jack, and interestingly, no streaming services built in. I'm a bit surprised by that. And maybe BMW could add them in their app screen, but not something you're seeing on here. And I don't know if I mentioned Bluetooth, but it does have standard Bluetooth streaming. Speaker locations. As I said, this is a 16-speaker system. Starting on the bottom left door here, you've got mid-ranger 1, tweeter 2, mid-ranger tweeter up front 3, 4, 5, 6 in the door over there. Coming into the back, we've got 7 mid-range, 8 tweeter, 9, 10 on the other side. 11, 12, 13, 14 mid-range and tweeters in the D-pillar. And then this system has subwoofers under the two front seats. So we're getting 15 and 16 under the seats there. All right, I'm going to get this stuff put away so we can head out on the road.
This system was doing so well, so well, right up until I heard the music dropping out at that loud volume with the uh, with the hits of the drums. You all notice that there was a uh, fluctuation in the volume there. And at the end of the day, this is not a very powerful system, 464 maximum watts. And I didn't think we'd really see it come through, but we're seeing it come through right there. But when it comes to the mixing, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, I actually prefer this better than the Bowers and Wilkins that we listened to yesterday. The Bowers and Wilkins was a very bright tuning and it made for a music listening experience that was not quite harsh, but it made your music not sound, you weren't getting all the instrumentation that you should have been in the right balancing. So I'm actually happier with the way this is tuned than that Bowers and Wilkins system. One thing I do want to do before we continue on with the video is I forgot that I wanted to test the 5.1 capabilities of the system. So now that we're stopped, we're going to come over here, bring it down to search, browse folder, and we're going to use the immersivaudioalbum.com surround demo and channel test. I can already hear that 5.1 is working properly. I hear the, the birds around me. Welcome to the immersive audio album channel. And nicely through the center speaker there. Left. Center. Right. Left surround. Right surround. Yep, that is a properly tuned 5.1. The immersive system. audio album channel configuration test is now complete. Hey, it all. Cool. So even with the Harman Kardon, you're getting proper properly mixed and, and played 5.1. For this next track, wow, we'll turn the bass all the way up, see if we get more dippage. Drive time is fine. 
what my thoughts on the 16 speaker Harman Kardon here in the X5. I think BMW finally got tired of getting absolutely dumped on in the Harman Kardon sound system tests because starting with the i4 and then now listening to this X5, they finally made broad improvements on the system. So much so that you're really not missing anything from the standard or from the Bowers and Wilkins upgrade. I would go out on the limb and say 98% of people listening to music are going to have no difference between this system and the Bowers and Wilkins. If you really crank it up loud, you get a little difference in the power that I mentioned there. And then obviously if, if you're really into the, the surround modes, the kind of concert gimmicks and everything, that, that Bowers and Wilkins diamond surround is going to give that to you. And it's got light up tweeters. And it's, it's certainly fancy. But just because it's got speakers on the roof, that doesn't make it that much better of a system. So I'm still giving this Harman Kardon an A. I'd be very happy to listen to music in here. And before I did this test, I listened to some of my own tracks. They sounded fantastic. The depth is good. The, the tuning is right. And you got a nine band equalizer to play around with too. I'm a fan. So nice job, BMW. Definitely don't be uh, concerned if you can't get the Bowers and Wilkins in one of these lower X5 trims or if you just don't want to pay for it because this Harman Kardon is plenty good. Thank you all so much for watching. If you do want to hear the Bowers and Wilkins, check the link below. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from DM Sound, and as always, drive on.